here in Ireland, apologies for the wind, it's a little bit windy, not ideal conditions for a, a trip to Dunsany Castle today. But we're outside our B&B, getting ready to prepare to go to Dunsany Castle for the first time. It's about 17 minutes away or so. Excited? I am, yeah. You'll learn a bit, a bit more about Dunsany than you, <laughs> yeah. you might have. You've read The King of Evelyn's Door, so you, have, you're in yeah. good stead anyway. So, uh, we flew in to Ireland for the first time yesterday. Flight was okay, or so we're not the we're not the best flyers, but it does actually make coming back to Earth and sitting down and enjoying nature and historic sites a lot a lot better. So we never really did that much yesterday. We uh we drove down from Dublin to the Wicklow Mountains. The first thing we saw was the Glendalough Valley, which is a historic site with a monastic village. A monastic village, yeah. In, indeed, um, we were planning to do a, a video there, but it turned out that. The, Again, conditions weren't too great, and we were just trying to find where we were going. And it was about what it was about five o'clock or so, wasn't it? Yep. We saw the Glendalough monastic village. Took some nice photos. Had some nice dinner as well. Now we we drove back. So as for the main point of the trip, then today, Dunsany Castle and the nature reserve. So I'm quite apprehensive. I'm not quite sure exactly what to expect for the castle the castle tour. I'm not who, I'm not sure who's going to be running that. I don't know, it's actually not Randall Plunkett who's running the castle tour. Perhaps it's another, perhaps it's an expert on Dunsany's literary heritage or the, or the history of the castle itself. Probably will be that. It should be interesting. Um, I'm not entirely sure if they'll be able to actually go into the the room that Dunsany actually wrote in. That I think great, I th yeah, yeah. That, that would be great, but I read something that said uh, you might not be allowed in. Right. But but this is a place that he actually walked around and, and, and thought about his stories and, and yeah. wrote and I'm sure he, uh, he also rode on horseback around the estate and he got but he got back from hunting actually and used to write his stories after he had that inspiration. Wow. Yeah. So that'll be the Dunsany Castle tour. As for the rewilding tour, that's actually going to be run by Randall Plunkett himself, which I, I never actually knew. So it'll be quite interesting to poss possibly speak to the great grandson of Lord Dunsany himself. Possibly get an interview. <laughs> Possibly get an interview, indeed. Um, Do you have any questions in mind for him if you were to get one? So I have a few, but the two main ones I think would be, firstly, in, in terms of nature, I may actually ask him about his approach to to letting animals die on the reserve right. for carrying beetles, which would be obviously oh. my background. So that'd be quite interesting because it's obviously right. I mean, that would help the carrying beetle assemblage. That'd be quite interesting to ask. I actually watched a couple of videos, but he never. It's going to brought up that area. Um, aside from that, I think really what I want to know most of all about Randall Plunkett is whether he was inspired by Lord Dunsany's fiction. Right. Because I've I've not read a single thing or watched a single thing that said that he got into nature because of the fantasy stories of Lord Dunsany. I think it was only in 2014 or so that he really became interested in rewilding. He said he became a vegan and that he. Uh, he was never really a country. He's a called himself a country boy. He, he was. Right. He, was li he lived in New York, and um, it's, a, it's it's interesting. I'll be interested to see whether like what was the impetus for him getting into nature. Yeah, yeah. So I think after the tours, we plan to maybe go to the Hell of Tara. Is that correct? Afterwards. Oh, but yeah. So after the two tours, we'll be heading up to the Hell of Tara, very famous prehistoric and historic site, the seat of the High Kings of Ireland which should be nice. It's not a very big site, but um, it should be nice to see. We'll see the Stone of Destiny as well. Um, very fitting for this channel and for nature and history and whatnot. So, just a little short video to introduce what we're doing today. So hopefully the weather clears up and all goes according to plan. Thanks for watching everyone. Here, it? Oh well, it's private, but I'm sure we'll get a reception. Fit, fitting the uh, amount of dogs at Dunsany Castle. <laughs> it's just sort of a yeah, that's okay. I'm just going to say it again to all straight points. Oh, that might be worth nothing, but they'll go. Oh yeah, that one in particular. Bang! Okay. They'll go that one. You just re it. That well, if, one. I, if I take out anything, I'll, I'll like yeah. see. No, no, you. I don't have to see it. <laughs>
I'm recording a video. Oh, nice. This is a. Uh, it's pretty extraordinary. That's my name for shine. Scare all the trauma. I did recognise that one. Yeah. yeah. It's this is so reminiscent. Incredible. They're really great. That's the, that's the cover of the book of wonder. Oh. That's oh look, that's incredible. I, I've used that in a review. I definitely recognise them. They're all great. Oh, wow. Right on to re rewilding tour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello everyone, so we just finished the Donzini Castle tour, actually better than I thought really. Yeah. We could go on for a little bit, but there was some really nice Lord, Lord Donzini specific stuff. So we are now getting ready for the rewilding tour and there's quite a lot of people. I, I feel prepared having brought my hat, my Tilly hat that I've been in quite a long time. I'm very underprepared. Ryan might be a bit underprepared in terms of clothing, but he's got a beard to back it up. <laughs> So we'll see how it goes. Um, I think this is going to be about two hours long or so. I was just thinking about the, the Dunsany Castle tour. It's a shame we couldn't take any videos there or anything like that, but it was kind of a private affair. So, we'll see how it goes. There are nettles, there is swamp, there is poo, there is everything that you should not wear on your feet. But anyway, do you not have anything better? Okay, all right, you're, 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 you're going to ruin those things. That's okay. How's the to run? Yeah, it's quite nice, it's quite good. Right. Single fail right now. Yeah, <laughs> trying to avoid disturbance. Ryan, uh, sorry, Randall seems to know his stuff. He was just mentioning about how old or fixed is nitrogen and things like this. It's quite a fairly specific scientific bit of knowledge there. He is very knowledgeable. You might ask him a few questions later on, which we mentioned in the introduction. layers upon layers of spider webs of fungus. Plants communicate, trees communicate. Animals get signals from this fungus. This fungus is like the broadband network. It allows communication between systems. And this is a system, a system of plants, a system of bacteria. All of that is connecting, and the mycelium is the glue. Now, how does nature adjust itself? So I think this is a pretty decent place to wrap up. A good time. Yeah, it was great. Being, I really enjoyed going there. Yeah, that's a nice castle. Yeah, being Randall Plunkett and seeing all sorts of stuff in the castle as well. The art of Sydney same. Various belongings of Donzani, as you've seen his library and things like this. And we're just we're at the Mount of the Hostages, seen some ancient Stone Age art on the uh, Destiny, which is over there somewhere, I think. 